Today we're going to be taking a look at a toggle switch. It is a LED plastic toggle switch and I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can wire these up and then we'll work into that with the relays and into conjunction with the LED lights. So let's get started. So there's a couple different ways you can do this um, that I like. One is you use a spade connector, the female version for them, they fit right on top there, you can push them on, they fit really nice, uh, works well. You can either use tin dens for your wire, which means you put a bit of solder on them, and then well, you put it in, and when you crimp it down, it locks it nice and tight. You can do it without the tin in the ends, which is the least secure way to do it, just jamming it in and then crimping it down. It does work, but in my experience, there is absolutely no longevity with that. Um, another thing about these things is if you've ever taken one apart and looked inside the plastic in here, you can't see it on the camera here, but inside there is a split and it runs down the top side and it comes straight down the center there. And a lot of people don't know this is when you're crimping these, you need to make sure that the pin portion of your wire crimpers goes on the opposite side of that split. So you want the half circle side over the split and the crimper or the side on the other opposite side where there is no split. So when you squeeze it down, the pin pushes in through the aluminum or the metal here, sorry, and it creates a post basically into the wire that's on the inside. If you do that on the other side with the post towards the split, it actually splits it apart and it will come apart a lot faster. So it's something that's uh, important to know with those. As I was saying, there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, the most secure way in my opinion is that you strip the end of the wire you plan to use. And you, you don't need very much, maybe a centimeter or something like that, not very much at all. And then you figure out which one you're going to go into. There's holes that are drilled in these, in each one of the posts. And if you push that in a little bit through the wire through the hole, and then kind of give it a bend, and then feed it in the rest of the way, you'll push the wire up in like a U form so that you can actually get it back up to the top again. And then once you have that in place like that, Sure, it's as secure as you can get it with the just the watch my call, just the wire. A little solder on the end of your iron so it's increase the contact. And now you have a very good secure connection on there that will not come off. The wire will break before that comes out of there. If you're putting, installing something into your vehicle, RV, ATV, doesn't matter what it's going into, if you plan on having it there for a long time, that's the way I would suggest doing it. And you might ask why is that not dangerous because you have the posts exposed to the open wires and that. I'll get to that. So you'll need some heat shrink, a couple of different sizes. Um, make sure when you're buying it you know what switch you're going to put it on in case they are slightly different. Most of the spade connectors on these are standardized. So, with that said, you'll trim off again about a centimeter, a little longer. Now, doing this into something, you'll want to put it onto the wire first, obviously, then solder, and then slide the heat shrink back down over top. So, now you put the heat shrink over top of it like that, and like I said, you need to different sizes. You take the other one and make sure that it goes behind that one. So the slightly smaller one goes behind and then the larger one up in the front. Now take your lighter or a torch or whatever you plan on using. I mean, you're not going to do damage to the switch. And that one slides right down over top of it. This little piece got a little too close to that one so it kind of started to shrink on the end so I'm just flipping take that one and slide it over top of the boot that you just did, making sure it's cool first because if you 
try and put it on, it'll, and it's hot, it'll start to shrink before you can get it on, it doesn't give you a nice clean fit. So now, do the exact same thing you did with that. Now you've got a very nice sealed connection there. There's no way that you're gonna get any sort of contact between the two. So that is my favorite way to do it. As I said, the other way is you can use the soldering iron. With this one, I like to take a little more off than what I would normally use. And I'll show you why here in a second. Once you get it to that point, a lot of them are a little bit bigger, so I like to bend them over. As you can see, I've just bent that section right back upon itself, made it as tight as I possibly can there. Excuse my soldering skills, I'm doing this left-handed right now. Right-handed person would be soldering with my left. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. All right, so now I've tinned the end of that. So when I try to force it in here, I haven't made it small enough, which is my bad. You can give it a crimp. A pair of pliers, once it's soldered, it's very, it's very strong. And then you slide that right into there, and you can see, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, it almost comes out. This one has a tab there that stops it from going any further but it comes out fairly far. Now, like I said before, you want to find the split portion of that. And on this side, this one, it's like this. And then you don't want to apply a lot of pressure. You're not trying to crush it. You're just trying to get enough pressure so that post goes into the aluminum or the, so the metal on the inside there and creates that post through the wire. And there you go. You can see I haven't broken the plastic going through just basically made a small indentation that has pushed the metal into the tin wire on the other side. Now, again, you'll need a small piece of the heat shrink. And you can feed it on the back of this one if you hurt anything. But as I said, if you are working on it with the wires in a car or something like that, make sure you put your heat shrink on first, then your connection, then you uh, don't have to worry about trying to slide it over that. More than once I've done the opposite. You gotta take it all apart, it's a pain in the ass. So let's not do that. Now, this one is very clearly marked as to what goes where. So you have your positive, which is your line in. You have your light, the little uh, icon of a light on there. That's to, up to your load. And this one here is your ground. So I will push this on there. These ones are actually a very tight fit, which I like most. Sometimes you have some that are kind of hokey and not a good fit at all. So, now I've done that. Slid the heat shrink over top. Make sure it's as shrunk as it can get all the way around, but without overheating anything. You're not looking to melt the wires or do any soldering with your Bic lighter. You're just trying to give it enough of a heat source on top of it that it shrinks the heat shrink down as low as it'll go. And this one is being a bit tricky. I think we might have to go a bigger size. Oh, we got it. Okay. So, I don't know about everybody else, but I buy my heat shrink from an electrical or an electronic supply company and I end up buying it in four foot lengths and it's a couple bucks for a four footer and then I always have it, I'm not running out, I'm not trying to scrimp and save money or because I don't have, I think I'll have enough. So it's good stuff to have around, you can use it for just about everything. Okay, so now we've done the positive and negative and that is just to show you how that spade connector goes on there. And we can do, take that off, it's really difficult to get off. Chosen a white wire for the load out in this one, mostly just for ease of identification during the video. But sometimes when I'm out working on vehicles or whatever, wiring something, I will use some color like that, and I try to do it always the same. So if I have red, red is always the positive. 
if I have black, black is always the negative. If I don't, then I'll use like the brightest color that I have as the positive and the darker color as the negative. And in doing that, you're pretty much assured that you're always going to remember when you come back to it, which wire you used for where. Um, other people might not, but you will consistent with it and do that the same type of way every time. This one is a bit tricky, so get in there without melting the other plastic or the heat shrink. The one thing with this method is that you do have to be fairly quick with it because you, if you put, apply too much heat to that post, on the left side of there, if you apply too much heat to that post, you are going to melt the plastic. An alligator clip on it while you're doing it will act as a heat sink if you don't have one. You can also get in there, wire it, uh, solder it as fast as you can. Maybe if it takes a little longer, the trick is to get it done as fast as you can and as well as you can at the same time. And then get a pair of needle nose pliers onto it and hold the needle nose pliers there and they will sink the heat out before it does any more damage to the, the uh, switch or melt your heat shrink if you're going to be putting that on. So it's a nice trick, you can just use it to suck that heat right out of there. If you don't have a proper tool to do it, you can use your needle nose pliers. Okay, so now we've got that one on in that position. And this one, I can use a this smaller of the bigger ones because it's not going over a spade connector. That's one nice thing is you don't have to worry about that portion. Remembering to keep your extra heat shrink back away from where you're working because with your lighter it doesn't take much to uh, shrink that stuff. And even just being too close or sometimes even just the heat traveling up the wire will do it. So, Keep your work well away. And again, you can use a pair of pliers. I'm sinking the heat out of it right now. Once I start my hand, it's cold enough, I can slide that over top. And once I do that, we have a switch that is ready to be wired in. It's got the pigtails on it, it's heat shrinked all together, and you're good to go. Now, have the right size, I can do it. Okay, another little trick I like, and it's more just to keep things neat and tidy. I'm a bit of a OCD freak like that. You can take a big, bigger piece of your heat shrink, slide it down as close as you want to get it, and then hit it with the lighter. It'll shrink those wires together and it keeps them together for your installation. It doesn't really do much for the wires and stuff like that and a lot of times I'll take it off if I need to for the installation, but I do it just to keep things neat and tidy while I'm working on them. So, or if I'm storing them, because I will build these in advance and if I'm doing a bigger install I'll do quite a few of them. And then I'll just stick them into my electrical toolbox or where I keep my components and whatnot. The situation dictates. And then when I'm ready to do the install, or if I need to do an install or do something, I already have them wired and I don't have to worry about that step. It gives me something to do on a cold winter night, you know, or whatever, nothing goes on the tube. The wife's in a bad mood, something like that, you can just take off and uh, you know, I've got a project i got to take care of. Little busy work, I guess you call it. So there we you have it. Now we are ready now to hook this up into the relay and onto the lights, and we will do that in the next step. For right now, I am going to show you how these look when they're lit up. Oh, how the lighting will take to that so much, making sure your positive and negative are well away from each other when you're working on it. But he's done now. All right, there you go. So when it's in the off position, there is no light. When it's in the on position, there's your light. The light is on the back, inside the main body of the switch, 
but when it's coming through whatever wall of that you have it coming through, or dash panel or whatever, it will just light up the switch portion and you won't see the one that's actually hidden in the back. So there you go, that is the toggle switch, basic classic LED toggle switch. Pick them up from most uh, automotive supply stores. I hope you liked the video and stay tuned for the next section.